Thank you, this is my first time in Utah, so hello, Utah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country out here. Uh, those of you all who haven't heard me speak, I'm about to do something, and I'll explain to you why. I'm gonna give thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I do that every time I speak, because without Jesus Christ, nothing in my life would be possible, and this great nation would not be possible. You know, when I think about uh, the fact that I am the ninth child born uh, ninth of ten, born into an extremely poor family, grew up uh, in the shadows of downtown in the southern city as a black child, uh, that I grew up would grow up to be the first black lieutenant governor of North Carolina. It blows my mind every time I think of it. It blows my mind. And I mention it continually. And I mention it today and I give thanks to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today because here it is. The United States of America, despite what some folks might say, is still the nation where dreams come true. It is still the freest nation on earth. It is still the land of opportunity. But the United States can only remain the freest nation on earth and can only remain the land of opportunity if we have elected officials who understand the motto of this organization, that motto of limited government, that motto of the free market. The mentors throughout my life were people who always told me, you can be whatever you want to be. They were never people who told me, rely on the government, wait for the government, stay at home, wait for a check, even my own mother. My mother was an example of that. My father died when I was 12. My mother had never worked outside the home. She had two choices, stay at home and rely on the government, or get out and make it happen for yourself. She, get out, she got out, she made it happen for herself. And I watched with miraculous eyes, as my, with, with eyes wide open while my mom performed miracles with the scraps that she was given in life because she relied on herself, her individualism, her freedom. She knew she was in the greatest nation on earth and she made things happen. Because of that, she gave us what we needed in life. And beyond that, she gave us a great example that nothing speaks better than getting out and working for it, earning it, and not waiting on the government. And so, as elected officials, this is what we must do. Certainly, we shouldn't lay back and allow folks to just run willy-nilly and run amok. We need to be the facilitators who make sure that our streets are safe and that our, our corporations are running well and that corruption is kept at bay and that we make sure that uh, the, the cities are crime-free. But we need to be those facilitators that allow the experts to do what is necessary to build our economy. What we've seen over the last year, the overreaching government reach, the overreaching of government in the lives of individuals and in business should be a wake up call to Americans. There are experts in this nation in the fields of medicine. There are experts in the field of business. There are experts in the field of education. Those real experts do not exist in our government. They are in those businesses. Go Government needs to partner with those folks and allow those folks to do what they do in order to continue to build our economies, build our education system, build our medical system. Those are the folks that we need to rely on. Those are the people that we need to hand the wheel. Now, when I say hand the wheel, I don't mean allow them to have the wheel to steer the ship in any direction they see fit for their own purposes. Of course, there should be oversight. Of course, there should be some tempering of things that make sure that those who would not do the right thing are not allowed to prosper under the, for the wrong reasons. But the handcuffs that we oftentimes see put on government or put on business and put on our economy comes from our government. We need to move out of the way. Be that wise facilitator that allows the free market to drive the economies that we want to build. In North Carolina, one of my goals in North Carolina is to leave North Carolina better than I found it. And that seems impossible because North Carolina is such a great state. It seems almost impossible. But there's lots of opportunities in North Carolina. And we want to see those opportunities through. But we know those opportunities will not be possible with an overburdening, overbearing government that burdens our education system, that burdens our economic systems. We must be innovative in our thought when it comes to dealing with those things, not imitators. We must be innovative because we know the key to true success and the way to move forward is to be innovative. Rely on those experts out there. Rely on those folks who know better. 
You know, I'm a firm believer that as an elected official, I'm not supposed to know everything. What I'm supposed to try to do is know everybody that does know everything and rely on those folks and take heed to those folks and take heed to that wise council to continue to help us build our state into an even greater place. As I said, it's my sincere desire to do that. The folks here that are here tonight from North Carolina know the challenges that we face. They know the sparse economy of the East and all the opportunities that lie there. And I have a dream and a vision inside my head of that eastern part of our state growing and expanding into a great place of commerce where everybody can succeed. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. Oftentimes when people think of the economy, they either think of Wall Street or they think of uh, their street. The economy is everything from your street to Wall Street, from the living room to the bedroom. All of those things are our economy. We need to make the connection between the two so folks understand how it all comes together to make what we call our economy and how we can make it work for everybody and we can help everybody within it succeed. Because it is my fervent dream that in North Carolina and in every state in this nation that young people start to see that hope and promise that exists. And the stories like mine can be highlighted so folks can know that it doesn't matter where you, where, where you stand Today, as an individual, just know that you stand in the greatest nation on earth and that the opportunities that lie before you don't exist anywhere else on this planet. Grab a hold of those dreams. Take a hold of those opportunities. And as elected officials, we're going to make sure that those, uh, those opportunities do not fail you because first off, we're going to give you an education system that truly educates you and gives you the tools that you need to succeed to pursue your happiness in this great nation. And then secondly, we are going to build an economy that works for everyone. As I said, from your street to Wall Street and every street in between, we're going to make sure that economy is successful for you. It can't be done without everybody joining in together. It can't be done without all the voices at the table. No voice. No voice, either right or left, dictating the conversation. Because our economy never stops. Our education system will never stop. Our energy problems will never stop. These are not arguments, folks. They need to be conversations. Conversations where well-meaning people who want thoughtful solutions come together to find those solutions for everyone so that we can leave this place better then we found it. Someone did that for us. And now it's our turn to do it for future generations. And so I say to you on this day, that is my solemn promise. And I hope that that's the promise of every legislator in this room, whether you be a governor, or whether you be a state representative or a state senator, or whether you're a city council member or a school board member. It doesn't matter. If you're a servant of the people, the very first thing within your mind should be to serve those people and to lead those people with a better city, a better state, and a better nation than you found, no matter how great it is. Because I said, somebody did it for us. It's time for us to return the favor. So guys, I encourage you, continue to stand strong, continue to serve your constituents. Again, continue to serve your constituents. That is something that's been lost in America that we desperately need back. We are not leaders. We are not leaders. We are servants, servants of the people who elected us. We should keep that first and foremost in our minds and move forward to make our, to make our little spot of the world better than we found it. So guys, I encourage you. God bless you all. God bless the great state of Utah, and God bless the great state of North Carolina. Thank y'all very much. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Please, Please welcome back to the stage, Alec, National Chair.